Um, so we've got a bunch of small updates of what SIG Network has been up to in the last year. Um, and then we'll have time for questions at the end. Uh, and with the lights, I can't really see you. So if you raise your hands before then, I won't know. Um, next slide, I don't remember who's starting. Okay, so Nadia and Sean are going to talk about network policy. Right, so we are starting with the SIG network policy API subgroup to SIG network. We are doing network security for you. You may be familiar with uh, our most popular API network policy, but also there are some more or less fresh new APIs called admin network policy and baseline admin network policy. And um, they are out of three, and we are following the process of our friends from Gateway API. And we have our own enhancement proposal called Network Policy Enhancement Proposal, or NPAPs. Anyone can open them. They are relatively simpler than CAPs, so I can recommend them. If you have any requests, uh, that's a nice process to follow. And we know many people have struggled with many network policies in their clusters and trying to figure out what they actually do. And that is why we have a really nice tool for you, which is called Policy Assistant, which is supposed to help you figure out what is actually happening in your cluster. Um, now, we have some new members in our community, and I'm happy to uh, let <laughs> Sean give you more updates about the internals of our network policy. Thanks, Nadia. <clears throat> so I'm going to talk about admin network policy. Um, I just wanted to start by motivating it, like explain why we're doing this. Um, so we're adding these new APIs, um, and and they kind of add to the existing network policy API that's already in Kubernetes. Um, what are the problems with that? Um, uh, network policy, as defined in Kubernetes right now, is opt-in, and it's allow only, and that is kind of okay for developers, or at least security-minded developers. You design your app, you open your ports, you create a network policy to go along with it, and you deploy it. Um, but if you're a cluster admin tasked with various uh, cluster admin-y things, such as setting a cluster-wide security um, uh, policy, um, you know, uh, a kind of a security posture, like you want everything to be deny all, you can't easily do that with network policy. Um, you might want to enforce strict guardrails, you know, prod and staging cannot talk to each other under any circumstances. A developer can't accidentally add a network policy that allows that. Uh, you know, you have, you, you have tasks like that as a cluster admin, and you need a way to do it. There's not a good way to do that with network policy as defined. Um, you want to lock all that down with RBAC, so only you can, can um, update those policies and set the posture that you want in your cluster. Um, and you might want to prevent footguns by allowing system traffic, you know, allow DNS to, to um, cube DNS, that, that kind of thing. Um, you might also want to break your, your cluster into multiple kind of isolated tenants where they can't talk to each other no matter what. Um, and the key thing is you want to own as little policy as possible. You could do all of these things if you were owning all the policy in the cluster and you were managing it all for your 1,000 namespaces and your 10,000 developers and so on. But you're just one person, probably, and you don't want to do all of that. So um, thank you. Um, so admin network policy um, is a custom resource um, defined in our CRD bundle. Um, and it's, it's like a, a second layer or tier of policy that is higher precedence or kind of runs before the network policy in your, um, in your namespaces. Um, it has no implicit behavior associated with it in the same way that network policies do. So there's no implicit deny all once you add a policy. Um, it's just explicit actions. So you have allow pass and deny, um, allow allows the traffic immediately, pass um, delegates the traffic to the network policies, so that's how you pass things down to your um, namespace owners and your developers to do the fine-grained policy, and it has deny, which we don't have in um, the normal network policy, so you have explicit deny to be able to block traffic to certain things, block traffic between prod and staging, or whatever it is you're trying to do. Um, yeah, next, next slide, please. Um, Complement to that is baseline admin network policy. So baseline admin network policy is a singleton, and it's designed just to solve the problem 
of applying that security posture to your cluster. So um, the default security posture of Kubernetes has always been allow everything by default. And if you want to change that, so if you want deny all, or if you want deny all except allow DNS or, or whatever, and then allow your namespace network policy to build on that, um, there was no way to do it. Um, so it's a singleton that controls that. Um, and its only role is to replace that deny, that allow all action. So the baseline admin network policy only gets hit if you, f if you don't have any network policy applied to a pod. So it's to solve that, that narrow use case. Yeah, next slide, please. Um, I wanted to call out some recent um, enhancements that have been made. Um, so we have NPEP122, which is tenant isolation. That's a, that's a work in progress. So that's one of the things that the, the working group wants to achieve is a good way to do these isolated tenant namespaces. Um, Nadia has been pushing that forward. And we have a, a few different possible ways of doing it. And we're trying to hash that all out. So that's, that's why that one's marked as in progress. Um, we have MPEP126, which adds ciders and node selectors to the policy. So you can reference things outside your cluster by cider, or um, you can reference your nodes in the policy. And we have MPEP133, which adds um, FQDN support, so you can do domain-based policy, allow to my RDS instance in AWS, that, that kind of thing. Um, the, the API, as Nadia said, the API is distributed as CRDs. And the most likely thing is that you'll install one of the CNIs or security providers that supports this, and they'll bundle the CRD with it. So if you install Calico, which is what I work on, we'll be bundling the version of the CRDs that we support. And likewise, for the other, the other implementations, um, which are on the next slide. I've put a link to the, to the APIs there, and the QR code goes to that. So where are we with implementation? An API is pretty useless without an implementation. Um, the API itself is heading towards beta. We're, we're pretty close. We're about to kick off API reviews and try to track down the final thing, final details that we need to do to get to beta. Um, there's five implementations so far. Um, that's up from two last KubeCon. So Antria and OVN Kubernetes, they led the way. Um, Calico has added support for AMP. BAMP didn't quite make our release cutoff, so that will be in the next release, hopefully. Um, and we have Cube Network Policies, which is a reference implementation by Antonio, which allows us to test, test the end-to-end -end tests uh, before we've written you know, vendor-specific implementations. Um, Cube OVNs also added support. Uh, it's on Cilium's roadmap, but um, the latest update there was they were asking for help to implement. So. I'm not sure when that one will arrive. Um, and with that, that's all I had to say about admin network policy. Back to Nadia to talk about policy assistant. Right. So getting back to policy assistant, that's a really nice tool that is getting developed every day. We had a really nice talk on the previous KubeCon. If you want to know more about that and see a really nice demo, please check it out. Um, but for now, policy assistant is this uh, tool that simulates the policies in your cluster. And it can get your policy YAMLs from the real cluster or just from some files if you want to download them and you do not have access to your cluster, maybe. And we have some recent new features and highlights. So what this tool can do now is it can, as said, read um, your policies from different sources. It uses JSON input for different traffic aspects. And then you can. there are some references that you can um, go to if you want to know more. But the biggest news is that we are cutting a new release. So finally, you can use this binary with a given version that will actually work for you. And we want to give a shout out to uh, multiple contributors, thanks to whom we have this nice tool actually working with all the co cool new features. So that's Hunter, Gabriel, and Nicola. Thanks a lot for your work. And just to give you a quick overview of how this tool looks like and what it actually can give you. So a couple of examples. Uh, first one, I hope you can see it, um, but it's analyzing TCP port 18 bet 80 between the two workloads. So that's the real output. And again, you can check the demo that will hopefully give you more details about that. Or you can even use, um, you can specify multiple traffic paths with just the JSON, as you can see here. And then another one is you can get a full explain for a, a full set of network policies. That is probably the best feature ever. So it 
basically the tool that finally explains what is actually happening in your cluster. And on that, uh, we are done with our updates from Sig Network Policy API subgroup. Um, <clears throat> okay, Cube Proxy. Yep. So Cube Proxy is the default implementation of service proxying. If you're using something like Cilium or Ovian Kubernetes, it has its own, but we provide the default one. Uh, for a long time, the, the standard Cube Proxy implementation was based on IP tables, but IP tables is sort of a dying API. Um, and we knew that we needed to move to NF tables. Uh, that was alpha last year. It is now in beta uh, by next KubeCon NA. It ought to be GA. Um, so it's, it's mostly compatible with IP tables, but better. Um, <laughs> the, the one catch is that it does require a slightly new, newer kernel and Linux distro uh, just because you know, NF tables is still I mean, it's totally usable, but it's still a work in progress. They're, they're still, you know, adding stuff to it and making it better. And so with older distros, there were bugs or missing features, and it won't really work. So if you're, if you're on an older system, you may not be able to try out NF tables yet. But if you're on something new, try it out. Um, we've made a bunch of changes since last year. Um, so and the, the, this lists some of them, uh, just that various contributors had done. Uh, one of the, the big ones is incremental sync support. So when, when we first put the NF tables proxy out, we were like, oh yeah, it's NF tables, it will be faster, but it was actually slower. <laughs> um, and, and you know, we've, but now we've done some optimizations and, and so uh, you should try it out. Um, as I said, it's not 100% compatible. In part because we wanted to get there. There are certain bad ideas that we had in Cube Proxy at, at various points that we wanted to get rid of, but we couldn't because of backward compatibility. And so we're using the NF Tables proxy as a way to, you know, change the defaults. Um, but we don't want people using IP tables to switch over to NF Tables and suddenly discover that that they were depending on these bits of functionality. So with what what release did those go in? Do you remember? Was it? Okay, so starting, we, okay, it didn't make, yeah, okay, that, that sounds right. Starting with 132, uh, if you're running Cube Proxy in IP tables mode, uh, there are some new metrics where it will detect if you're, you're taking advantage of certain bits of functionality that IP tables does that the NF tables proxy doesn't do by default. Uh, and it will, you know, these metrics, the counters will go up. And so you can see that and, and know that you need to adjust the configuration when you switch to NF tables. And there, there's more about this in the, the documentation on migrating from IP tables to NF tables proxy. So you can check it out there. Um, and if you want to know more, there will be a talk tomorrow at 2.30, how the tables have turned. Kubernetes says goodbye to IP tables. And you can find out a lot more about NF tables in Proxy and in Calico. Hello. Hi. Now, improvements in connection tracking. So QProxy now uses Netlink to interact with connection tracking subsystem. This allows to delete, uh, to bash delete all the stale UDP flow connections. And uh, we no longer uses, use OS exec to delete any connections. Essentially remo removing dependency on the contract binary. Along with that, we have added contract reconciler. It uh, observes all the services endpoints, tries to compute the state and cleans all the stale flows. Huh? Ah, okay. Okay, this is uh, multiple service sizes. This is a special problematic for the people that use uh, Kubernetes cluster that doesn't have the island mode or call the overlay. So basically, when you run out of IPs, the main problem is that you cannot replace the service either, right? If something is a flag in the Kube API server, if you run a cloud provider, you don't have access, so you are just the only, you are frustrated. You cannot change it. So we added um, a new API for users to be able to grow this service either. Right? You can create your new range, and you can increase the, the size. And this will alleviate your problems with uh, IP exhaustion. 
The other important feature in networking is most of you heard about dynamic resource allocation that's uh, mainly driven by all these new AI workloads, GPUs, and all this special hardware. Well, networking is uh, has been this. Oh, sorry. Okay. Networking. Well, started discussing about multi-network, about multiple interfaces, right? Kubernetes doesn't have any of this concept, right? What we did is uh, we realized that we can build on top of DRA by using reducing the problem to network interface, right? So people that have the need to schedule workloads depending on network interface, you have AIML or TCPUs come with this Melanor NICs or you have FPGA NICs or whatever thing, this framework of DRA allows you to, to configure your workloads and use this uh, network interface. We also are building more on top of that, and Lionel from Ericsson merged in 132, and you kept. So with DRA, we are able to provide uh, network status uh, attributes like IPs. So mm, this is super useful for multi-network workloads because now these pods that have multiple interfaces will be able to publish multiple IPs and add more functionality like service discovery or in the secondary networks and this kind of stuff. DRA is a bit complex. This diagram tried to represent a bit the user studies, but will work uh, towards the graduation of this API on improving the user experience with, I don't know, more high-level abstraction for networks, something like that. So if you are interested, the feedback at this moment is really appreciated because it will help to model the, the semantics of or, and the user experience of this feature. And as I said before, with uh, DRA, we are working towards a new model of networking. I used to call this Kubernetes Network Driver, where we just not only depend on, on a monolithic uh, network plugin or CNI plugin, and we will be able to provide this driver functionality with additional functionalities that you may need for very specific use cases, and this will allow you to develop features quickly and in a more compatible way, in the sense that you can roll out your f network functionality and be totally compatible with the existing network plugin in your cluster. And that's it. If any of you have any, any questions, that's the right moment. Otherwise, you can reach out to anybody here during the conference and ask, do, ask anything. Do we have a microphone? I can, I can, I can do the well. No, 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 no. You have mics on, on the. So on the admin network policy and the baseline admin network policy. Um, one of the selectors is namespaces, right? You can say namespaces, and then you can select on the namespaces. So if I'm a cluster admin and I've defined this admin network policy based on namespaces, but the tenants can override the label from whatever they want, right? Like whatever cluster admin has defined on a tenant namespaces, but I as a tenant admin can change the label to match or override whatever the cluster admin has done. Isn't that a security issue, or am I missing something there? Yeah, usually we say that uh, users do not have, um, they don't get to change the labels of their namespaces if the cluster admin didn't give them the rights to do so. So that's kind of what it, it, the security is supposed to be based on. So if the cluster admin is defining admin network policies based on namespace labels, cluster admin should make sure that users cannot change those labels. So and and that's, that's how the default RBAC policies in Kubernetes are set up. Only cluster admins can change namespace labels. I see. I can create a namespace as a tenant admin, but I cannot change label on the namespaces. Is that correct? Right. OK. And in the service seeders, right, uh, um, can I, uh, uh, is it like I have, can I have two different seeders? And um, when I create a service, can I tell from which seeder Cider, uh, I need the IP from, or Antonio, do you, is that? So the the um, the main use case was to to deal with IP exhaustion, right? So the, the way that the API is model is to to the sense that when you run out of space in your in your laptop or something, you add more disk, right? So this is the same model. It's you just add capacity, 
and the API server will take from editing capacity. There are a lot of requests like this that they want to do segmentation on, based on the service size, right? And the problem is that it's complicated to implement that, right? Because how the rest of the system works. Uh, I was thinking in some kind of policy to, or hints to assign IPs from one or other range, but independently of what happens, this has to be after GA. So if you have some use cases, we can talk and, and okay. discuss more about it. If we have flexibility, and we, we can work out something. But as I say, this API is, is, is very complex. It took like four years to get this merged. So just first graduate it, and then we, we add functionality. Yeah, yeah, I'll hit you guys on the hit, hit up. So quite few, another, sorry, another question if no one else is. Uh, so uh, um, uh, the, the admin network for ANP and BNP was out of tree. So what about other features that you guys just discussed? Uh, service leader, is it in tree, out of tree? The DRA, in tree, out of tree? So what is native, what is not native? Oh, well, the, the, we, we will have these discussions. I mean, everything that Kubernetes does uh, as a SIG is, is native, right? The thing is, there are consequences of doing in tree and doing out of tree, right? So the, thing, the first thing that we want to do in tree is when a user deploy Kubernetes with the releases binaries, they expect everything there to work, right? If I create something, it has to work. Then there are some use cases that are additional functionality. Not everybody wants admin network policy, right? And the other thing is, if you get tied to the cycle of Kubernetes in tree, First, the bar is much higher for experimenting, right? The, so it is low development. So the, the, the way that the process is evolving is for these use cases, we are splitting in sub-projects that create their own CRDs. But because it's CRD doesn't mean that it's not Kubernetes. It has the same, the same standard that any Kubernetes API. I mean, network policy, gateway API, those are the default APIs of Kubernetes. I don't know if you want to add something. I just want to add, so far, um, the only things that we've done CRD-based out of tree are things where the implementation of the feature is also done by something out of tree. Okay. So you know, there's no gateway implementation in core Kubernetes, and there are no network policy or admin network policy implementations. Network policy is a core API, and it's always been sort of problematic that the API exists even if you don't have a network plugin that implements it. So admin network policy fixes that problem. If, if the API exists, then you know something is, is implementing it. I see. Like, because this says SIG, intro to SIG networking, right? This topic, so I'm just curious to know as a charter, um, see network policy is already native, entry, services is entry. Um, um, like we added um, port range for network policy. Uh, that was part of the network policy extension itself. and. Uh, I don't know, I don't remember now whether we bumped the version or not, or still V1. So is there anything coming in wherein we are changing uh, services, Kubernetes services or Kubernetes network policies and bumping the version with new features, or it's always going to be out of tree, CRD based way, and then find implementers to implement it? New stuff gets added to, I don't think we've added anything new to network policy in a while, but there are always new little bits and pieces getting added to service. The latest one is the traffic distribution feature, which lets you keep traffic within zones. Um, because it's backward compatible, we don't have to bump the version to do it. So service is still v1. Um, uh, so, so what, what else was, was the? It, what else were you asking? Yeah, I was asking, uh, uh, like, uh, everything that uh, the SIG network uh, is mostly any new thing that SIG network would do would be a CRD with some... No, uh, it, again, it depends on if, it, if it's part of the core of Kubernetes, if we're adding new functionality to that, it would go in tree. If, if it's something that would be implemented by third parties, at least right now, that's been the, the dividing line. We don't have a completely clear definition of when it makes more sense to use CRDs and when it doesn't. So you one last question, since I don't see anyone. So. <laughs> but but if, if anyone else does have questions, no, no, let's, you, let's, should, let's. you should get in line, yeah. Um, hi, uh, I mostly work on the Cilium network policies generally, so forgive my ignorance. So can, can you stand closer to the mic? Hi, 
Um, I mostly work with Cilium network policies in general, so uh, forgive my ignorance about the Kubernetes network policy. I was reading the CFP or NPEP for the FQDN selectors, and I noticed that it's only designed or intended for the admin network policy and not for the general network policies. But in Cilium, we generally have uh, FQDN policies even uh, with the regular ones, not just the cluster-wide ones. Is there a specific uh, reason why that decision was made, or is it just the stepping stone, uh, and eventually that would be considered? So by the decision, do you mean including that in admin network policy, but not in network policy? Uh, I, I see that it's, it's explicitly mentioned as out of scope or not intended uh, for that NPEP. Is that just uh, reduced scope or intentionally kept out of the yeah, so this FQDN feature is very new, so we wanted to just make sure we can agree on the simplest use case, so it actually may be extended and changed in the future, and for now we don't even have uh, implementations of that, so that's a very new field that we call experimental for now, so it will, it's intended to actually get feedback from implementations and hopefully from users, so that we can actually adjust that, so this part is not a stable API yet. All right. So what, one important thing is, what Sin Network tries is to keep the, and Kubernetes is great is in having common API. So what we want in Sin Network is that everybody has the same way to define admin network policy, right? So what we try and say is, we go experimental. If everybody implements the API, all, all of us wins. If we have an API that is partially implemented and not all implementations follow that, users pay the, the, our bad practices. All right, yeah. The other thing, right now, the network policy working group is not really working on core network policy at all. Um, there's been discussion about do we want to do a, a reinvented version of network policy that matches admin network policy better, and, and there, there are use, user stories that we had in the FQDN NPEP that could only be implemented if you also have the FQDN support at the, the user, you know, network policy level. So at some point there, there should be something, but we don't know exactly how or when that will be. Got it, yeah. Thank you for your talk. As someone, as someone that's newer to the Kubernetes networking side of the house, I, I'm familiar with the, the landscape of like Calico and Cilium and having pretty broad install bases. Could you share some light on kind of the role of SIG network, like, are you trying to provide implementations for features that are in these CNIs to like replace them, or is it just more guiding from an API perspective? Well, the, it's, the problem is we have this fine line, right? Is is where do we go? And we have this discussion everywhere, right? We have the network policy per, uh, problem, for example. We have a new API, and we don't have a way to test it, so we created that. Uh, tool that allows to test, right? Qproxy is another example. So the question is, is per case basis. We try to, to do the best for the users, and sometimes we fail, sometimes we, we take the right decisions, but it's complicated. You need to define an API, but you need to know if the API works, right? And you need to get in this long cycle of let people try, people doesn't have time, you don't have feedback, you end with wrong APIs or get with fragmentation in the ecosystem. So I cannot give you a straight answer. It's we try to do our best, we try to have common APIs, and we try to engage with all the vendors. That's why we create all these working groups. We try to discuss every, all these options and provide the better for, for anybody. Is it a goal of your group uh, to bring features that are in like Cilium and Calico back to Kubernetes natively, like functionality? But that's the problem is, what is Kubernetes native? Right. That's, that's, yeah. that's a long discussion. Right. What we try is this feedback. For us, and C network is important. Users, uh, Calico and, and Cilium are the most important network plugin right out there. So their feedback is very appreciated. And they come to the meetings and they discuss, oh, we want to do this, we want to do the other. And this conversation is happening. It's not that we are a standard committee that detail oh, we are going to do this this way. No, there is always a conversation. And there is people from Tajir here. I went with people from Cilium the other day to another meeting, and we discuss, we talk, and we develop its API this way. It's an open source project. So the, our, our goal is to, to have 
standardized APIs that do the things that Kubernetes users need. In some cases, Calico and Cilium got to those APIs before SIG Network did and, and already have implementations. And um, you know, we, we are taking ideas back from them, I guess. Um, we, we don't plan on implementing pod networking really within Kubernetes. We, we still plan to leave that to, to third parties mostly. And you know, again, like the service proxying, while we did the cube proxy NF tables work, some network plugins don't use that, and that's, that's fine. Uh, I'm curious about the uh, reference uh, network policy implementation that Antonio wrote. I got the chance to look at it a bit ago. Is it intended? What's your aspirations for it? Is it intended just for you guys to test against, or is it something that if you're using a reference CNI and want network policy, you actually want to encourage people to go try and use in production? And any kind of trade-offs that you kind of made there, I'm kind of interested in hearing about it too. So everything that they do is, is with the goal it has to run in production to the maximum, right? But the thing is, when the, you need to be realistic. This is an open source project with one contributor and help of this, all these people. So if you want to support to run in your enterprise that is multi-billion company, you can call me at night. I'm not going to take the call. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. It's, it's an open source project. It's Apache license. If people want to contribute, some CNIs like the approach. It's a library they can use. It's a conversation. Right? But right now, it's that. It's an open source project that this network policy that works well and, and it's done to work to prove the new APIs and to work at the scale and all the characteristics that Kubernetes needs to support. Thank you. Hi, uh, John Dorco from Fiserv. Uh, Nadia, and I think, is it Dave or Dan? I, I think. Uh, I, I talked to you guys directly. Red Hat had, had set up something, so that, and I do appreciate you making that time. Um, I'm kind of wondering if I could buy you and the Cal and and is it Sean from Calico? I apologize. I'm a few minutes late. A drink, because we need to talk. Uh, <laughs> so we've been a we've been a Tiger Enterprise shop since we adopted OpenShift about two and a half three years ago, and that's gone pretty well, except concerns about the per node pricing costs as our OpenShift um, environment have grown. We also use Calico Cloud on top of uh, AKS. Um, we've had a few people suggest that no, Kubernetes network policies should be good enough. Um, but I think the existence of admin network policies and, and that effort shows that from if for folks who have to govern connectivity out of clusters, the network policies itself wasn't enough. Um, we have started building some OpenShift clusters with 4.16 on OV OVN Kubernetes. And one of my engineers has been uh, digging deeper, so I might have part of this wrong, but I think the, the admin network policy layer is not namespaced, correct? You'd, so, um, you know, and then anything I want to do namespaced is I just limited to the traditional network policies, which we kind of already decided weren't good enough. Um, and then the base network policy at the end is like a single object. Um, so I'm kind of stuck between something that is really working well, but my management is like, well, why can't admin network? Red, Red Hat's got this new CNI and new features, and, and so I'm stuck. And I guess the, the answer is maybe, and maybe it's specific from a Red Hat because you have an implementation. Is there a way to talk to you guys about some of these missing features and understand will they get into future versions of OVN Kubernetes, whether they're part of admin tech network policy or not? Or do I need to make a stronger argument to my management to keep paying for Tiger Enterprise? I, there's a lot to unwind there, but <laughs> I'm stuck here. Yeah, I probably tried to give a short answer. <laughs> uh, so we do uh, in OpenShift networking, right? And OVN Kubernetes is like an upstream plugin for that. We didn't have our own downstream only admin network policy version, right, of things. So we do implement things upstream first, and then we go with this API implementation. Mm -hmm. And the API is fairly fresh, so our implementation also just read GA recently. And we do plan on like implementing all the new fields that we are adding, right, including this, including the FQDN that was mentioned before. Yeah. And then. Basically, the, if you need more functionality, if you need more than one baseline admin network policy, for example, uh, we are happy to hear about your use cases, and we would go upstream. We would introduce that to the API upstream, and then we'll implement that. It, it takes a bit more time, but this is the upstream way. Yeah. 
At admin network policy, like, is definitely in a phase where we want feedback. Like, if there are things that you need to do in your clusters that you can't figure out how to do, you know, one, it may be that you actually can do them, and and it's we just didn't make it obvious. Yep. And two, it may be that you can't, and we need to add more stuff. And yeah, we want to know about that, both both downstream and you know, talk to your TAM at Red Hat and say, you know, yep. we need this. Thank you very much. I think you answered those questions, and I will talk to my TAM about setting up another chat with you guys. Appreciate it. Yes, Bye -bye. let's do that. <laughs>